now we will discuss about the tongue so the topic is study of tongue this is a muscular organ and uh, what type of muscle are present in tongue the, that is uh, skeletal muscle and this is organ of taste in examination you hold this viscera in this manner and you say the anatomical points the dorsal surface of the tongue is rough and which is situated above and tip of the tongue is directed anteriorly and the associated structure is directed vertically so the now come to the parts of the tongue tongue presents tip this is tip and this is base two lateral border dorsal surface that is ventral surface and one is root root is uh, means the genioglossus muscle now some structures presents in this viscera so in the dorsal surface of the tongue is marked by a v-shaped sulcus terminalis in the anterior two-third and posterior and in the junction of anterior two-third and posterior one-third so this is sulcus terminalis in front of the sulcus terminalis there is numerous papilla are present so these are the papilla which makes the tongue uh, dorsal surface of the tongue rough and posterior to the sulcus terminalis there is tonsil this is lingual tonsil so these are the lingual tonsil now come to the structure of tongue as tongue is a muscular organ so what are the muscles present in the trunk so some muscles are the extrinsic muscle and some muscles are intrinsic muscle the function of extrinsic muscle is they alter the position of the tongue and the function of intrinsic muscle is they alter the shape of the tongue and the extrinsic muscles of tongue are genioglossus, hyoglossus, condoglossus, styloglossus and palatoglossus. I repeat, genioglossus, hyoglossus, condoglossus, styloglossus and palatoglossus are the extrinsic muscles of tongue. And the intrinsic muscles of tongue are superior and inferior longitudinal muscle, transverse lingui and verticalis lingui. Now come to the histological structure of tongue. In histological structure, we show two layers in tongue. One is mucosa, another is muscle layer. In muscle layer, we show three directions of muscle. One is oblique, one is longitudinal and one is vertical. And in mucosa, there are two layers. One is lining epithelium and another is lamina propria. Lining epithelium of the tongue is the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium as it's situated in a body orifice, so it is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. So uh, now come to the lamina propria. In lamina propria, we know uh, it presents some nerve plexus, some blood vessels and some glands. In tongue, there are three types of gland. One is anterior lingual gland that is seromucus in type. Another is von Ebner's gland which is serous in type. And another is posterior lingual gland which is mucus in type. Now come to the term papilla. The papilla is the projection of lamina propria lined by mucous membrane or covered by mucous membrane. Four types of papilla are present in tongue. Number one, filiform papilla. The whole dorsal surface of the trunk presents filiform papilla which is elongated and conical in shape which is highly keratinized affecting the entire dorsal surface of the anterior two-third of the tongue. The peculiarity of the filiform papilla, it is devoid of taste bud. The another papilla is circumvallate papilla. These are the circumvallate papilla. And circumvallate papilla are the largest papilla and which are least numerous. And which presents in front of the V-shaped sulcus chiasmaticus, uh, sulcus terminalis. Now, the foliate papilla. These are uh, presents 
in the lateral margin in front of the sulcus terminalis. So these are the foliate papilla. The another term is fungiform papilla. The fungiform, the word derived from the shape of fungus. So the fungiform papilla are mushroom shaped and which is present numerous situated discreetly along the side and tip of the tongue. Now you have to also have to know the structure of taste bud. Taste bud are the specialized organization of cell which are uh, composed of supportive cell, gustatory cell and uh, some and some basal cells. And the nerve fibers are present in, in the taste bud. And in examination, uh, you have to know about the location of the taste bud. Epithelium covering the tongue, the inferior surface of the soft palate, the palatoglossal arch, and the posterior surface of the epiglottis, and the posterior wall of the oropharynx. I repeat, the taste bud are present in the following structures. The epithelium covering the tongue, the inferior surface of the soft palate, the palatoglossal arch, and the posterior surface of the epiglottis, and the posterior wall of the oropharynx. Now, come to the artery supply of tongue. The tongue is known as lingui in Latin word. So, the artery of tongue is the lingual artery, and the vein of the tongue is lingual vein. The lingual artery is derived from the external carot carotid artery and posterior part or base of the tongue is also supplied by a portion of tonsillar artery and the lingual vein is the largest and the principal vein of the tongue which is which is drains into the internal jugular vein now come to the lymphatic drainage of tongue this is very important question for detailed examination in lymphatic drainage, there are three groups of vessels. The first is marginal vessel, which come from the apex of the tongue and the lingual frenulum drain bilaterally in the submental lymph node. Then, uh, the vessels from the lateral margin of the tongue, the lateral margin of the tongue drain into the submandibular lymph node. The both group of lymph nodes are drained into jugulodigastic and jugulomohyoid lymph node. The another group of limb vessels are the central vessel come from the dorsal surface of the anterior two third of the trunk in front of the valet papilla, which are drains into bilaterally into the submandibular lymph node and deep cervical lymph node on the both sides. And they are ultimately drained into jugulodigastric and jugulomohyoid lymph nodes. The last group of lymph nodes are the dorsal. Uh, limb vessels are the dorsal limb vessel. They come from the posterior one third of the tongue, including the valet papilla, and they drain into the jugulodigastric and jugulomohyoid lymph node. All the lymph nodes are ultimately drained into the jugulomohyoid lymph nodes. And the peculiarity of the lymphatics of the tongue is the tip of the tongue is the richest lymph, lymph uh, has the richest lymph drainage of the tongue. So a cancer affecting the tip of the tongue is spreads to all the cervical lymph nodes of the both sides. Now come to the developments of the tongue. The tongue develops from the floor of the primitive pharynx in relation, relation to the pharyngeal arch. I repeat, tongue develops from the floor of the primitive larynx. And uh, definitely the mucous membrane of the anterior two third of the tongue develops from the fusion of a pair of lateral lingual swelling with the tuberculum impar. And what do you mean by tuberculum impar? It, it, this is the median lingual swelling. So, in easy word, the mucous membrane of the anterior two third of the tongue develops from the fusion of a pair of lateral lingual swelling with a median lingual swelling. The median lingual swelling is known as tuberculum impar and the mucous membrane of the posterior one third of the tongue are developed from the cranial part of the hypobranchial eminence and what is hypobranchial eminence and this hypobranchial eminence is formed by mesoderm of second third and part of part, part of fourth pharyngeal arch and the mucous membrane of the posterior most part of the 
tongue is derived from fourth pharyngeal arch. The muscles are developed from the occipital myotomes. Now come to the nerve supply of the tongue. The nerve supply depends on the development of the tongue. As the anterior two-third of the tongue, mucous membrane of the anterior two-third of the tongue develops from the first pharyngeal arch. First pharyngeal arch. So the, it is supplied um, by the nerve of the first pharyngeal arch. General sensation is carried by lingual nerve. Lingual nerve is the branch of mandibular nerve. And again, the mandibular nerve is the branch of mandibular arch, that is first pharyngeal arch, and which is the branch of trigeminal nerve. And special sensation, that means test sensation carried by corda tympani nerve. And corda tympani nerve is a branch of facial nerve. The posterior one third of including the valid papilla develop from the hypobranchial eminence that means third, second, third and fourth pharyngeal as the tissue of the third pharyngeal arch overgrows that of the second in general and test senses uh, so the general sensation and test sensation is carried by glossopharyngeal nerve and we know the glossopharyngeal nerve is the nerve of third arch and the extreme posterior part developed from fourth pharyngeal arch so uh, this part is innervated by the superior laryngeal branch of vagus nerve we know the vagus nerve is the nerve of fourth pharyngeal arch and sympathetic supply of the uh, tongue is uh, supplied by superior cervical ganglion. Now come to the some developmental anomaly of the tongue. The commonest developmental anomaly of the tongue is ankyloglossia or tongue tie in which uh, the shortening of the frenulum lingui is uh, present so tongue is not free from the floor of the oral cavity so which affect the speech and the another thing is uh, Agglosia, that means uh, absence of tongue and another term is hemiglossia which is uh, half portion of the tongue is underdeveloped and the another developmental uh, anomaly is uh, known as the lingual thyroid and the another thing is thyroglossal cyst if the thyroglossal uh, duct is persist or uh, that is known the condition is known as persistent thyroglossal duct which is also a developmental anomaly and the another developmental anomaly is the bifid tongue. Now come to the associated structures of this viscera. This is epiglottis, elastic cartilage in nature. And uh, here is a fossa. It is very important clinically. That is known as pyriform fossa. This is the pyriform fossa. Now come to the boundary of the pyriform fossa. Very important for examination. The medially by eriepiglottic fold. And this is eriepiglottic fold. This is eriepiglottic fold. This is epiglottis and this is eriepiglottic fold. And laterally by the thyroid, lamina of the thyroid cartilage. Laterally, here is the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage. This is a uh, hyaline cartilage in nature. And uh, this deepest uh, depression is known as the pyriform fossa. Now come to the importance of pyriform fossa. This is act as catch point for foreign bodies. And beneath the mucosa of the uh, piriform fossa, it, uh, there, are, there is the internal laryngeal nerve. If during removal of the foreign bodies like fish bone or meat bone, safety pins, uh, the internal laryngeal nerve may be injured, then hoarseness of the voice uh, is um, present and the cough reflex is lost due to injury of the internal laryngeal nerve. And this is the clinical importance. The another importance uh, of this pyriform fossa is it is known as the smuggler's fossa. As uh, the fossa is artificially deepened by smuggler using uh, lead ball to hide precious materials such as diamonds. So this is known as smuggler's fossa. And the another uh, associated structure is the larynx. So this is the larynx, cartilaginous structure. And this is the vestibular fold of the larynx and this is the vocal fold of the larynx and this is the sinus of the larynx. This is all about uh, this structure and uh, here is the hyaline cart uh, thyroid cartilage. All about the viscera of tongue. If you have any confusion or any question about tongue then you can comment on our comment box or post in our callosum BD study group. Thanks everyone.